Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to Crossroads Online for Easter on April the 4th, 2021. Whether it is your first time worshiping with us or your first time in a long time, welcome. My name is Susan Seitzma Bratt and I serve as the senior pastor here. If you are visiting with us online today, we encourage you to email visitor at crossroadspres.org so we might connect with you. If you have a prayer concern or a joy, please email those to prayers at crossroadspres.org so that we may lift you up in prayer. We have a couple of announcements this morning. Next week, Sunday, starting on April the 11th, we have an opportunity for you to learn more about our church. A membership class will be offered in person from 10.15 to 11 or virtually via Zoom from 1 to 1.45. If you're interested, you can register online. And also starting April 11th, we have two new adult ed classes beginning. The Enneagram is an ancient and wonderful tool for understanding who we are and how God is refining us as disciples of Jesus Christ. Starting April 11th, Laura Rossman and Scott Samuelson are co-teaching a class. There's an in-person option on Sundays at 1015 or on Wednesday evenings, a virtual Zoom option. You can purchase the book and begin the study. And finally, during today's service, we will celebrate the sacrament of communion. Please feel free to pause worship on the, your video to gather some elements so that you may partake in the Lord's Supper later on in worship. Although we worship in different spaces, we do worship together in spirit and in truth. And so we join together in our call to worship following the words on the screen. Early in the morning light, the women, the women went, went to Jesus', Jesus tomb. tomb. The tomb was empty, the stone rolled away. For, For God's, God's love is stronger than death itself. itself. Let us join our voices with Mary Magdalene. We, we have, have seen, seen the Lord. Lord. Easter people, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed.
of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Trusting in God's faithfulness and compassion, let us confess our sin before God and one another. O oh God, God, you raised, raised Christ from, from the tomb and shattered the powers of sin and evil. Raise us from the tombs of our sin, O Lord, and bring us to new life in you. You bring us good news of Easter joy. Forgive us when we cannot hear it. You send us out to share your love. Forgive us when we cannot carry it. You cast a vision for peace and justice. Forgive us when we cannot imagine it. Forgive us when we stand in its way. For you are the God of the empty tomb, the one who makes all things new. Amen. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In, In Jesus, Jesus Christ, we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together in gratitude. Oh. 
Good morning and happy Easter. My family does an Easter egg hunt every single year. And when we do the hunt, sometimes it's so much fun, we have to do it all again. We hide the eggs again and do it once more. In the scripture for today, though, the women were going to the tomb prepared for one thing, and then, surprise, instead they found something incredible. What did they find? Let's see. Do you think the women found jelly beans? Jelly beans are pretty neat, but they aren't amazing or life-changing. Do you think the women found peeps? Would they be amazed if they found a peep? Probably back then. But peeps are really fun to find in an egg hunt but they're not amazing or life-changing. But what they really found when they, when they went to the tomb that day is in this egg. So why is an empty egg the best or most life-changing thing the women could have found? Well, when the women went to the tomb, they fully expected Jesus' body to be in there. They had gone to the tomb to do the burial rites that were part of their culture at that time. And instead, when they didn't find, when they got to the tomb, it was closed instead of open. The burial rites they thought they'd come to do were replaced with the joy and surprise of finding an empty tomb. You see, Jesus had risen. He had risen indeed. So often we miss the joy of Easter and we settle for less. Instead of the joy of Jesus rising from the dead and the joy that we will also get to be with him in heaven, sometimes people settle for things like egg hunts. Today, let's take it all in. God loves us so much. And he gave us his only son, Jesus, to live with us, to die for us, and to rise again so that one day we will rise as well. And if you're ever doing an egg hunt and you see an empty egg, that happens sometimes in egg hunts. Remember the incredible surprise and joy we have because God loves us so much. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's fold our hands and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for surprising us with the empty tomb. Help us to feel your love and the joy that comes from knowing that we will always be with you. Amen. Let us pray together. Living God, with joy we celebrate the presence of your risen word. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit so that we too would proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Our first passage for today is from the Psalms. Psalm 30. Hear God's word for us today. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from shale, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. 
Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me, O Lord, my helper. For you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. And from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one who Jesus loved. And she said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and also went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary... Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. While it was still dark, that's where Easter begins. While it was still dark is a rather understated way to begin this passage about this most important turning point. Easter is a day when we are accustomed to a big celebration with pomp and circumstances we've experienced thus far today. While it was still dark. Have you begun your day while it was still dark? Maybe you rose while it was still dark to tend to a sick child. You stagger through the halls and you rock and you soothe. Maybe you rose while it was still dark after spending the night by the bedside of a beloved family member. Your neck is sore because sleeping on that couch on the hospital unit was not sleep at all. You heard the beeps and you could see the lights of the machines. 
Maybe you woke up while it was still dark to begin your work day. Maybe you've woken up with a start while it's still dark, your chest full of anxiety and fear. Your mind is racing and you can't go back to sleep while it was still dark. In those quiet, pre-dawn moments, the darkness of night is still there and the dawn of the morning has not yet broken through. And when you wake up in those early morning hours, the fear, well, the fear can still grip you and that grief of the evening still lingers. While it's still dark, you're groggy and you can't see things clearly. While it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Just two days before, on Good Friday, she witnessed the anguish and the torture of the crucifixion of her Lord. And so she comes to the tomb in the wee hours of the morning before many were stirring. She's not who you would expect to come to the tomb. No, you would expect Peter, James, or John, those disciples that Jesus wanted by him in Gethsemane. Why was she there while it was still dark? Mary Magdalene was there because she was a faithful woman. She was there to honor Jesus. She is there to sit vigil. She comes when it's still dark, likely with tears still staining her face, the weight of the grief still deep in her bones. And friends, this is how Easter begins. For new life always starts in the dark. The preacher and pastor Barbara Brown Taylor wrote a beautiful book called Learning to Walk in the Dark. And in it she writes, resurrection is always announced with the Easter lilies and the sounds of trumpets and bright streaming light. But that's not where Easter began. Resurrection happened in a cave in absolute darkness with the smell of damp stone still hung in the air. New life starts in the dark. Whether it's a seed in the ground, a baby in the womb, or Jesus in the tomb, new life always starts in the dark. And so today, that's where we begin. Throughout the season of Lent, we have been listening, and our practices have helped us to quiet us so that we could hear the still, small voice of God and we could pay attention to the nudging of the Holy Spirit. Yet even today, we live in a world that is broken. We're mindful that there is so much suffering and despair. And so today is a day for listening anew to this good news of Easter. And to truly hear it, we have to start in the dark. Easter begins before the light of day when you can't quite see the way ahead. Easter begins in the emergency room when the doctor comes to tell you that your loved one might not live. Easter begins when you hear the words, our marriage is over. Easter begins when you're sitting in a care team meeting and you realize your loved one won't be coming home with you. They'll be going to a memory care unit. Easter begins and happens where there is death. Easter begins where there is an end. Easter begins where there is grief and struggle because that is absolutely the place where Easter is needed the most. And this year, we know all too acutely that this is where Easter begins because Easter 2021 is another year of a pandemic. We've lived a year of this plague that has taken so many lives and shifted our world in profound ways. And this year, we know in our bones the words of the psalmist, O oh Lord my God, I called to you for help. You brought me up from the grave. You spared me from the pit. Weeping may remain for a night, but joy, joy comes with the morning. We too have wept. We have cried out to God for help and healing. And so while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. 
She went to the tomb when it was still dark with a seed of hope and faith. And when she arrives, it is empty. And so she runs to summon the disciples to have them come and see. And they come and see, and they return to their grieving. They can't see, but not Mary. Unlike the others, she stays where it is still dark, and she doesn't run away to hide. And one more time, she goes into the tomb, except this time, there is an angel present, a messenger of the Lord, asking her, woman, why are you still weeping? She states the reality, they've taken my Lord, I don't know where they've taken him. And immediately... <laughs> She turns around and she's face to face with Jesus, except in that early morning pre-dawn while it was still dark, she can't quite recognize him. And then Jesus calls her by name, Mary. She listens. She knows that voice, the dawning of Easter. She desperately wants to hold on to him, but she can't. Jesus tells her she can't touch him right now. She can't hold on to him. He's not the same Jesus who's been buried. He is risen. And this is the turning point. Mary moves from wanting to hold on to Jesus, her Lord and teacher, to running and telling the disciples about her Lord and her Savior. She runs and proclaims that first Easter sermon, I have seen the Lord. Friends, Easter dawns with hope. The psalmist proclaims, weeping may linger for the night, but joy, joy comes with the morning. You've turned my morning to dancing and taken off my sackcloth and turned it to joy. Dawn has broken and Mary has seen the risen Lord. This Easter of 2021, dawn is breaking. Have you seen it yet? I have seen Crossroads make this shift from mourning to dancing throughout this past year. When we closed our building a year ago and had to pause our in-person midweek ministry and table fellowship, we were very intentional that Crossroads is essential and that our mission to know Christ and bring others to him is not dependent on a building. Even if the shape of that was unclear, our desire to serve in mission is and was crystal clear. And so in the early days of the pandemic, one of our high school D groups decided they wanted to show the love of Christ, the joy of Christ in a tangible way. And they gathered these beautiful sunshine jars filled with notes of encouragement and prayers and Bible verses. And they dropped them off at local nursing home communities. When the world shut down, our teenagers saw an opportunity to bring the light and life of Christ to others. Our teenagers learned this here at Crossroads. In the early days of the pandemic, some of our staff no longer had the same work to do. Chef Marilyn had cooked meals for our congregation, and so she shifted to cooking meals for families with family promise. In a normal year, our kitchen might cook 52, 100 meals for our congregation. In the past year, Marilyn has cooked over a thousand meals to feed families that are homeless and finding stability. Morning turned to joy. We saw morning turn to joy as we pressed on in mission to build a house for Habitat for Humanity. As we saw our neighbors struggling and struggling, we continued to see new ways that we could bring the joy of Christ. We planted gardens, we collected food, and as our building is reopening, like Mary, we have been moved. This holy space is not just for our congregation. No, we are sharing it to nurture and tend to new life in our community. Every week here on our campus, several support groups meet to care for individuals and families that are walking through their own valleys of the shadow of death, of addiction, 
of mental illness, those places that feel like tombs. And because of our space, they are finding new life. Friends, why do we do this? Why do we open our buildings and our hands in service? Because that's where Easter takes us. Yes, it begins while it is still dark, but Easter opens the tomb and calls us not just to come and see, but to go and tell and show. Mary didn't just keep that good news to herself. She ran and preached that first Easter sermon to the disciples, and from there, they went out. Today, it is my prayer that you too would again see this gift of Easter, this promise, this hope of new life. How will you be moved, not just to come and see, but to go and show and tell? How now will you live your life with this gift of the resurrection? Today we join in God's movement from mourning to dancing, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the sustainer of us all. Amen. We are a resurrection people. Our faith is in Jesus Christ who defeated death and overcame the grave. So let us declare what we believe alongside the church in every place and every time, affirming the words of the Apostles' Creed. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, the tomb is indeed empty. Our Lord has risen. We are saved from sin and death and into a life of forgiveness, gratitude, and joy. Praise be to God. Love so amazing so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. We sang these words on Palm Sunday. Let us seek to live into them every day in the power of the Spirit. So thank you for including the ministry of this church in your response of gratitude to God. Together we proclaim the risen Christ and take part in the Spirit's work of healing in this world.
Let us pray. Good shepherd, you spread a table before us. You offer, we offer you our gifts, signs of your gracious love and tokens of our grateful hearts. Nourish us at the feast of the Lamb, that we may proclaim to all the world your triumphant love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You're invited to pause your video and get your communion elements if you've not done so. And now receive this invitation. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Many will come from east and west and north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. So come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Come to this table not because you're righteous, but because you sincerely love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you desire to follow him. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because you have any claim on the grace of God, but because you stand in constant need of his mercy and help. Come, for undoubtedly this is the Lord's table. The Lord be with you and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. 
We lift them, them up, up to, the, to Lord. the Lord. Give let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. Let us pray. With joy we give you thanks and praise, almighty God, source of all life and love. That we live in your world, that you are always creating and sustaining it by your power, that you have made us to know and love you, to trust and serve you. We give you thanks that you love the world so much that you gave your only son, so that everyone who has faith in him need not perish but have eternal life. We thank you that Jesus was born among us, that he lived our common life on earth, that he suffered and died for us, that he rose again, and that he is always present through the Holy Spirit. We thank you that we can live in the faith that your kingdom will indeed come, and that in life, death, and even beyond death, you are with us. Therefore, with all the company of heaven and with all your beloved of all places and times, we proclaim your greatness. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, by what we do here in remembrance of Christ, we celebrate his perfect sacrifice on the cross and his glorious resurrection. We declare that he is Lord of all, and we prepare for his coming in his kingdom. We pray that through your Holy Spirit, this meal may be for us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Accept our sacrifice of praise, and as we eat and drink, unite us to Christ as one body in him. Nourish our spirits, and give us strength to serve you in the world. To the one holy, eternal, and triune God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, we praise and give you glory, now and forever. And so, as our Savior Christ taught us, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus sat at a table with his disciples. He sat with those who would betray him, those who would deny him, those who would abandon him. And to all those imperfect disciples, he took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, broken for all of you. Every time you eat of this, remember me. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's saving death until he will come again. Friends, as you share this sacrament solo or with those who you might be worshiping with today, you may take the bread. Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. And you may dip the cup. Say, Jesus Christ, the blood of heaven. Now we will take a brief moment to reflect on our Redeemer and risen Savior, Christ the Messiah.
Let us pray. Lord, you have put joy in our hearts. You have satisfied our hunger with good things. In giving all, you have not withheld from us even your own son. So nourished at your table now, renew us day by day with the gift of your Holy Spirit that we may give ourselves completely to your service and walk with joy in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Christ is risen. If you would like to participate in our tradition of a flowering cross, you are invited to bring a flesh, fresh flower symbolizing new life to place in the cross on Easter afternoon or Easter Monday. And now receive this charge. Go out into God's world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak help the suffering, honor all persons, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the abundant love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with us all. Amen.